Today we are going to be talking about something that you never discuss with your friends or family but all of your relatives ask you the same question how much money do you make Yeah so Akhand was very excited about this topic so he introduced it but I am the host uh, anyway today we're going to talk about salaries and the most important part how do you go about negotiating it? So before we start, Akhand, can you give us a quick intro about yourself? Hi, my name is Akhand. I head customer success at Scalar. I have over 15 years of experience working with various enterprises such as Zomato, Food Panda, and Ola. I have worked and interacted with thousands of learners and hundreds of recruiters. I have also built and scaled teams of my own. Awesome, thanks. Okay, let me just give a quick brief on what we are doing in this series and then let's move on. Today we are going to extensively talk about salaries, how do you negotiate and more information about it. So before we move on, make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our upcoming videos in the series. So again, first question I want to ask is what has been the craziest negotiation that you had in the 15 years of your career? I have fortunately had uh, very reasonable asks when I was uh, building my teams. So that kind of leads us to having this conversation as to why it's important to understand how to navigate, what to ask for. Because in India, you kind of ask a number, right? Realistic, unrealistic, it doesn't make sense, make sense. People don't really go into the depths of mm. the research. They just ask for a number. If you get it, great. If you don't get it, hard luck. Understood. So my follow-up is, how do you know what to ask for to the recruiter so that you don't miss out on that increase or that potential series e? So it is a little tricky hmm. to figure out what to ask for. So I would like everyone to understand that for every role, there is a pay band, hmm. right? Essentially what that means is let's say a company or an enterprise is hiring for a SD1. Now there can be a band of essentially it can translate to a range, okay. right? Band AK range. So band of five to eight LPA mm -hmm. or a range of five to eight LPA. Now you wouldn't know that unless you have someone working in that company or you know someone who is making a certain amount of money or someone tells you, even if you have some data, it might be outdated. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you go to a platform like uh, LinkedIn or Glassdoor, it will have some indicative ranges but they may not be up to date. So what that role was uh, paying a year back may not be relevant today. It might most likely be paying more, hmm. uh, but you would not know the exact figure. But something good to know to start off is there is always a range and uh, generally a recruiter will play within that range. Got it. That's what I wanted to ask. If it is not explicitly stated in the JD, uh, how do you go about knowing this? Like what would be uh, the other side? That is the recruiter's thought process behind this. So recruiter's job is very simple. Mm. They want to get the best talent possible at the lowest cost, mm. right? So they would of course try to uh, pay you as low as possible. So for example, there is a range of let's say 10 to 15 LPA for a SD2. Now a recruiter might go ahead and offer you somewhere in the low to median range, mm. which is generally the case. So in this case, they might offer you 11 mm. LPA, right? And they might go up to 12. Mm. Potentially they can even pay you 15, but they will try to play around in the low to median range, right? So that is generally the initial offer. So what I would recommend is as much as possible and wherever possible, try to not give an expected figure from your end first. Okay. Let the first offer come from the recruiter or the enterprise, right? As much as possible. They will try their best to push you on give us a figure, yeah. tell us what you expect, but try your best. Uh, just say in the nicest way possible, you know, I'm very open. I'm op uh, whatever you feel is right, etc, etc. But try to get the first number from them because that will give an understanding of where you can negotiate from that sets the baseline hmm. right there is a very high potential you give them a number it might be on the lower end of what they could have potentially paid you they might straight away say yes hmm. so you technically miss out but try your best i know it is tricky it's not always possible yeah. but try to get the first offer from them 
let them come with the first offer and then that sets your baseline negotiate from there understood because most companies ask for the expected right when you apply yeah so i completely and that in that case you can't avoid it which is why i i'm saying try your best hmm. there are uh, cases where it's unavoidable hmm. but wherever possible as much as possible uh, try your best to not come up with a number first got it even after uh, let's say two rounds of negotiation with the recruiter what if the company is not matching your expectations go how, how do you go about it after that if a company is not matching essentially saying yes to your uh, number right again back to same example hmm. so let's say they say the best we can do is 12 and you say no but i want 15 hmm. and technically they can pay 15 right or let's say you say i want 14 they can if they have a limit up to 15 they can technically give you 14 but they might play hardball and say no we don't have budget etc etc what you can do in that case is um, you can potentially play hardball but is it it is risky hmm. because okay. you cannot with 100% certainty say yes this is the number you can only guesstimate right you are thinking oh it might they might have a buffer or 2 3 lakhs so you can potentially go ahead and play hardball like a lot of people do hmm. and say no you know it doesn't work for me there is a chance that if the hiring manager really likes you if they really want you on board they will come back the next day the next week and say hey you know what we took exception this etc etc and we will give you 14 which they could have done anyway but of course they want to try and you know pay as less as possible uh, but there's also a potential that they might never come back yeah mm-hmm. right hypothetically let's assume that 12 was actually their best mm. they might just go ahead with another candidate so it is a risk got it so is there any particular situation where you know you can hardball like as you mentioned if you are clear that they really need you is that the case where you go all in you would uh, of course know your technical potential hmm. right of course you need to be good behaviorally uh, right you need to have a good demeanor etc but let's say all of that is sorted you have culturally you are a good fit and technically you know you are very strong hmm. right uh, you are way above average uh, you are an outlier uh, you are an overachiever mm-hmm. in terms of your problem solving skills you have very good understanding you can of course do that uh, and again if you really are that good if not that opportunity some other opportunity will come which will mm-hmm. probably pay even more than you are expecting but you need to be realistic about where you are right a lot of times uh, there are candidates who are delusional and there are also candidates on the other end who uh, are under confident hmm. right who undersell themselves they are good but they don't have that confidence hmm. so either uh, situation is not that great you need to really know where you stand that way you will be able to demand what you really are worth got it now let's say i've got an offer how do i say that it's a good offer like is there any parameters that i have to follow so a lot of uh, beginners especially hmm. are fixated on the ctc part hmm. right it says 5 lpa 10 lpa 15 lpa that is not the only component you should look at what you should essentially look at is wealth creation in the short term and the long term so for example a uh, 10 lp offer might have 5 lp fixed and 5 in variables hmm. now depending on how realistic those krs and uh, targets are you may or may not see that 5 lp right so you are essentially left with just 5 lp which you can guarantee Uh, that okay this will hit my bank account hmm. so essentially that is what you have to consider so what you should focus on is enhanced salary and like i said uh, see how realistic uh, or how achievable the variable component is and apart from that uh, long term wealth creation can be in the form of something like esops hmm. right so if you are getting esops that can potentially lead to a windfall gain down the line it may or may not happen but it is again something additional and apart from that i firmly believe that you should not look at just the salary part of it right because there are people who are making a lot of money but are still miserable hmm. right uh, there's no work life balance etc so you, you should look at things like uh, what is the work life balance uh, what is the culture like uh, is the company working with uh, cross uh, cultural teams right different regions uh, does the role allow you to travel hmm. so in a situation where there are uh, teams around the globe there are annual offsets 
in a lot of companies, mm. right? A lot of companies' uh, specific roles will allow also allow you to travel, go for trainings, mm. etc. So all of these things do make a difference, right? So factor in all of these things, and then take a call if a f- an offer is good or not. Got it. So I was getting to it the ease of part. Uh, so let's say I'm a fresher. I I'm changing the company, and I've been offered thirty LPA and. around 15 is the esop component and this is the first time i have received a ctc offer with esop in it so what should i first look at and how do i go about understanding it right so let's say you get a 30 lpa offer hmm. and 15 half of it is esops hmm. if you have another offer then you have to realistically compare it yeah. let's say you have a 20 lakh fixed ctc versus 15 plus 15 hmm. from another company right 15 fixed and 15 uh, esops you have to keep into uh, consideration that esops is a long term game it may not uh, it may or may not translate into something <laughs> tangible right that is one now talking about that specific offer 15 plus 15 now let's say you get allotted 15 uh, lakhs worth <laughs> esops those esops will be allotted to you over tenure okay. which is called a vesting period so for example uh, that will be 3.75 lakhs hmm. into 4 right so every year 3.75 lakh worth esops will be allotted to you okay. and by the end of 4 years you will get 15 lakh worth esops allotted to you so 4 years is a common uh, tenure hmm. for vesting so that is how esops work but like i said you have to factor other uh, things as well um you know esops versus fixed salary versus uh, a variables hmm. uh, offer to offer you can of course evaluate but if you only have one offer then nothing like it if if you are getting it on top of your existing ctc uh, it's more like a bonus yeah understood uh, so we spoke about salary we spoke about how to go about negotiating the esop but the ctc contains a lot more information than just that uh, so can you give like a breakdown of all the things that you should consider uh, before you accept an offer So, like I mentioned, you know there are a lot of uh, things you should consider, mm-hmm. like uh, the work culture, working environment, um, work-life balance, mm-hmm. right? The ability to grow over time. Mm-hmm. So there are, for example, companies uh, that just working there, having that logo mm-hmm. on your resume, will have long-term benefits. Yeah. So a very well-established company will not pay as highly. Uh, especially when you're starting off as a early stage startup mm. right of course risk versus reward yeah but having that logo on your resume might help attract future employers down the line so it's a short term versus long term um, perspective and i always recommend that you know always optimize for a long term career mm. than a short term job because okay. jobs will come and go but career is something you have to build hmm. right so even if you work at and i'm not saying you should but this is something you have to evaluate so if you get to work with a very well established name and they're not paying as well compared to another offer that you have which hmm. is probably paying you more money but nobody knows about them it might be more prudent to probably opt for the first offer if it is not very different hmm. right if it's a it's some money here and there you might want to evaluate the long term benefit versus the short term gain correct right? because what you want to optimize for is a career 5 years 10 years down the line got it a concern so to sum it up uh, what are the things that you should remember on the negotiating table like i said uh, try to get the first offer hmm. from the recruiter right or the hiring manager yeah. try your level best to not give out the first number and whatever the baseline is try to negotiate from there even if uh, it comes from their end as a starter mm. or it comes from your expectation which you have initially expressed there will be some buffer mm. so try to play around that uh, you can play hardball but it is risky so keep that in mind and when presented with an offer do get into the depth of it right don't be fixated on the initial ctc mm. do figure out the various components uh, break it down into uh, what are the various stat deductions right what will be the in hand ctc um, so calculate what will be a monthly payout uh, what are the various uh, caveats 
when it comes to your variable pay hmm. right uh, it will have a qualifying criteria so what is that criteria is it achievable or not so keep all of these things in mind apart from that of course the enterprise might add a sweetener like esops wherever possible uh, so get details about that as well understand what is a vesting period it does vary sometimes right what is the amount do you get top up or not right and of course uh, don't be fixated on just the money hmm. there are lot of factors that make into a good employment overall hmm. right you want to ideally optimize for a long term engagement uh, try to join into a role into a company uh, or an enterprise where you can see yourself growing uh, have a long and prosperous career hmm. and then grow into future roles the only time you should ideally switch is when there are no more opportunities for growth good thanks again that was really insightful uh, so guys it's not a taboo to discuss your salary and also make sure you know what you're getting into before you get into the negotiation round make sure you make a checklist of the things you have to ask the recruiter and also if you have someone you know from the company you are sitting for the interview at you can get an estimated or an upper limit of the range that you can negotiate with right so that you do not miss out on the uh, increase in your ctc uh, so that's it in this series we talk about resumes uh, interviews behavioral and tech and what goes behind them how to handle rejection and layoffs so if you don't want to miss out on these content make sure you subscribe to our channel thank you for joining in see you in the next one mm-hmm.